So welcome back guys to the Docker tutorial series. So this time, um, this is I think in the 11th uh, edition to the series and you might notice that this time I'm not on a Windows based operating system, I'm on a Linux based operating system and Ubuntu 19.10 to be exact. Um, yeah, there are reasons I moved here. I really like, uh, want to get my hands or more experience into one full-time Linux user. It can help me as a cloud developer or generally as a DevOps guy if I intend to be one in the future. So, um, yeah, so let's get started to the real part. So, in the last video, we talked about the Nginx proxy as a Redis proxy as using it as cache, basically. So, last time, if you remember, we had this um, in our architecture. If we quickly review that just so you guys can remember so we have uh, three services actually four of them and in our front end we were basically having a reverse proxy on this specific specific port right so if you turn up this project it's going to reverse proxy to our backend to 4012 right so right now the problem is that we were caching our um, request to the backend through the reverse proxy that we have hosted on 4012 but there is this problem in that so uh, it's we're not that independent this cache is pretty good it's pretty fast but let's say you have a huge application like 10 times more than Facebook okay okay 100 times more but still you there will be cases where you might need a distributed cache so uh, the most famous uh, full-time or properly dedicated caching services that you find in these days is one is Redis and the other is memcached uh, in this video, we're going to talk about Memj Memcached. I really like Memcached, and uh, I've done some research before using one of them. So Memcached is the where I finally decided upon it. Uh, people say that it has a response time of literally um, two milliseconds. So uh, yeah, this is basically Memcached, and um, yeah, you can see on the front page the branding of Netflix in there, and also. Uh, but I personally know Memcached from. Uh, basically Facebook and Facebook even has a video on YouTube where they where Mark Zuckerberg himself is a, actually explaining how uh, he used Memcached to optimize Facebook back in I think 20, 2008 maybe something like that uh, anyway so um, yeah we get back and we let's get started with the Docker part in its side so luckily we have a Docker image uh, for Memcached uh, up there so uh, first things first let's go to our Docker Compose. So I do not want to create a Docker file for this because I just want to use um, uh, memcached that's provided on the Docker. So let's create another microservice and let's start naming it to be YT Cache. Oh, that's a pretty bad name, but I don't know. Can't really think of anything right now. So I'm gonna say image and that's gonna be memcached. And we're gonna say ports. And that's gonna be uh, yeah. And normally memcached is basically on one, yeah, one one two one one port. So I presume it will be here as well. One one two one one. Okay. And for memcached servers, basically you have to give a small command uh, about the fact that how many of MB of cache that you basically need. So I will go for a sixty four. You can have it depending on your need. So let's fire this container up real quick. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna say Docker. Um, okay. Yeah. I think we're in the right folder. Yeah, we are in the right folder. Maybe I will just check if I have Docker Compose in here. Yep, we have our Docker Compose file in this one. So we will do Docker Compose up and yep. okay. It starts pulling the memcached. So until it does, so let me tell you what I'm gonna basically going to use to use memcached. So uh, memcached is not going to give you an HTTP based uh, protocol in here. So remember we, we hosted it, we just used the same port for this and, but we have to use Telnet to connect to it at the moment. So basically memcached in, is intentionally a, a server cache, right? So it's a distributed cache. You can have it all across the world. So world in servers and regions and you can basically request your from your backend let's say even if it's a node.js it's a it's a you know python django app .NET, c sharp app and you are just going to use this uh microservice or a container that you just built in here to uh, access the memcached right but right now i'm not going to use it with a, not going to access it with a backend so 
what I'm going to do, I'm going to use Telnet to talk to it. So Telnet is also a kind of a protocol. I assume you guys have this idea about this networking protocol. So I'm going to say localhost and I'm going to give it the port, right? So let's so I hope it connects to it. Perfect, guys. So we are inside the Memcached. So in Memcached, um, I think it's that's the command for that. Oh, no. No, we don't like. Anyway, let's just try to first set a key pair. I've probably forgotten a little bit of syntax that I'm using it from this particular Telnet protocol because I actually am using it with a Node.js backend in my actual project. Anyway, which I will make a video in the future too. So, yep. So let's just try to first set a key pair. We can call it, um, let's say, YT. And this key pair, uh, the first element that you have to give it is you can just give it zero. This is basically for the metadata. And the second one is going to be uh, the lifetime of your, or the validity in lifetime of your cache. So I'm just give it 100 uh, seconds, basically. And then it's going to be the size, the byte size in bytes. So I'm going to say it's going to be um, 10 bytes, right? And then we go give it a value, right? Uh, so we say my name in here and oh, great. It says it's stored. And now you, what you want to do, you want to get this uh, key here, uh, this key basically. So you say get yt. Perfect, right? So you got your um, cache baggage. So that's going to be a pretty short tutorial, I assume. <laughs> And because it's it's just uh, I wanted to uh, show you guys how this is basically going to be turned up into uh, a Docker container. And uh, in the next video, we are going to talk. Uh, yeah, we're going to solve that problem that this is basically on the telnet, so we are going to access it with our uh, actual Node.js backend. So, yep, that's our backend. So we're probably going to go in here and talk to our um, yeah MKSD from here and return this data instead of this server, basically, if it's cached. So there are several operations that you can do. Um, I need to find that link again. Uh, I think it was this one. Yeah, so that's a pretty good link. I, link. I can actually link it in the description. So if you want to basically yeah, do anything with it. So, uh, oh yes, that was in the smaller case that I was making a mistake in here. So I'll just run it. Okay, perfect. So it will show you all the details about your cache in here. Yeah, the PID, the uptime, the time, and the version, and all that stuff, and about some um, number of key pairs that it's running. And there's a lot of information in here that you can we can get into details on the next video. And yeah, and and lastly, basically, you can uh, once you're done, there are several operations you can do. So we have this. I'm not sure if it's expired yet or not. So let's see. Oh, it's expired. So I would like to set another key pair um, in here just to exhibit the flush or delete operation. So 0, 110, and I'm going to say s and master again, and then we're going to try to get this key pair. Then we are going to replace this key pair, 0, I think I can give the same parameters here, with nasir s and and now if we get this key pair back, it's going to be replaced with Nasir Asin. And if I want to flush it, I think it's flush all. And yeah, first let's just look into the stats. Okay, so the stats, yeah, move to cold storage. And is there anything special? Yeah, so there was the, yeah, exactly, get hits. So we see we have three hits and one miss, and that's our basically the previous miss that we, the first miss that we had basically in this tutorial. So, yep. Lastly, we can see if it's still valid. Yeah, it's there. So I'm gonna flush um, or just delete uh, YT. It's deleted, right? So if you try to get YT, there is nothing you get. So finally, if you want to quit from the Telnet protocol, we can say quit, and yeah, it's done. So great work, yeah. So yeah, see you, catch you guys in the next video and we are going to basically talk to this MCASD server or microservice with a proper Node.js backend. Thanks for watching guys, bye.